Major General Kirill Bodanov, Ukraine's intelligence chief, spoke in a lengthy interview about Ukraine's offensive, as well as what his optimistic conclusions about the imminent end of the war and why Russia has paused its massive rocket attacks are based on. I would like to share with you the highlights. If we take a soccer analogy, it is now 72 or 75 minutes. Ukraine is approaching a landmark battle in its recent history and will never agree to give up any part of its territories and without the return of Crimea the war will not end. The only way to end this war is by returning the borders in any form, but not less than the borders of 1991. This is an interesting point, with the likely announcement of an entry into enemy territory. On the other hand, the creation of a buffer zone around the borders of Ukraine is indispensable. Going to the borders of 1991 is quite an achievable task this year. In his opinion, in the course of a counterattack sufficient amounts of territory will be returned by force. When asked why the West and Ukraine talk about the low rate of arms deliveries, Budanov replied cryptically, who knows the real rate of arms deliveries. Over December of last year, the only thing the enemy forces achieved was an advance in Solidar and fighting in the urban strip inside Bakhmut. The only place where the occupiers have some tactical success with huge losses is Bakhmut. In all other directions the Russian forces have completely turned to positional defense everywhere. Just one year later, the second army in the world has gone from offensive to defensive and now the game is played by the rules of the Ukrainian general staff. I think this is perfect, and there is nothing to add to it. On average in Russia they mobilize 20,000 people a month and this is not enough even to make up for the losses. Russia always has a plan B, any defeat they show to the domestic consumer of information fast food as a victory. Russia continues to produce new missiles, but now it is accumulating them to disrupt the offensive operation of the AFU forces. The volume of missiles produced is insufficient to carry out intensive missile strikes against Ukraine's infrastructure. The volume of missiles, which Russians had already less than the volume of Ukrainian anti-aircraft means. And three more interesting insights from Budanov. When General Surovikin was removed, he was charged for bringing Russia's missile arsenal to zero, recall that the last massive missile attack on Ukraine took place on March 9. A few days ago Russia decided to replace the peacekeeping contingent in the area of Azerbaijan's conflict with Armenia from contract servicemen to conscripts. The contract servicemen are being withdrawn, the conscripts are being sent. As you understand, this is not happening out of the good life. China has not handed over a single bullet to Russia by this point, and is not preparing. China is not going to do that in the near future. Meanwhile, unexpectedly for the occupants, the AFU is already advancing, having moved into the grey zone on the left bank of the Kherson region. There has been talk about this for several days, but now the information has been officially confirmed and it has been reported that the AFU has been carrying out heavy strikes against the Russians in the south for the past few days. I'm wrapping up for today, but I'll see you all tomorrow.